Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm going to revisit recursion. Now, it's been a couple of years since I originally explained recursion on this channel, and in that time, I think I've developed a better understanding of how to explain these concepts. So we're going to reintroduce the basics of recursion. This is going to be great for people who have never seen it before. And these examples will not necessarily lend themselves to showing why recursion is useful. So if you need to see why the juice is worth the squeeze, you may need to jump to a Fibonacci definition or something like that. I think that tends to overcomplicate recursion initially. So all we're going to focus on is first how to create a recursive loop and then how to build our understanding of a recursive definition. So let's talk about what a recursive definition is to begin, and then we'll dive into this for each, this print each example. Something is recursive when it is defined in terms of itself. In programming, that will typically mean a function that, as part of its definition, calls itself. This creates a loop, a recursive loop. So here we have a loop that is an iterative loop using the for each abstraction. So if we run this, then we will see it prints out each value 1 through 10 and we're going to rewrite this using a recursive loop instead. Again, you would think to yourself after we do this, I'd rather just use a for loop, you would be correct. Stick with a for loop here, we're just trying to understand how to create a recursive loop. So let's think about the problem space initially. We know that we want to console log each value in the array. The first action we would need to take is console logging the first value in the array. So we could write it like that. Say, all right, all I want to do is print the first value, and I can do that. We could rewrite this so that we pull out the first value and then store the rest of the values in a variable called tail. And then we could print it. So this would still allow us to print that first value. But now we have another piece of local state. We have this thing called tail and it holds the rest of the values in the array. If we want to print the next value in the input array, we need to print the first value in tail. So how could we do that? Well, we could say something like, you know, tail zero and, con and console log that, but we know we already have a function that console logs the first value in the array, which is print each. So we can just call print each, pass it tail, and that's going to take care of printing the next value. We've now created a recursive definition. The problem here is it's going to loop forever. So we have print each down here. It's going to pass tail in to print each. The new value for R is the values two through 10. So it's going to print two. It's going to pull off three through 10, pass again, and again, 3 through 10, it'll print 3, but we've never told it to stop. This is essentially like a while loop that's just while true. It'll just loop forever. It'll eventually, it'll console log the entire array, and then just console log undefined, 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 but never stop. So we need to introduce what's called a base case. And so our base case is our exit condition. How do we know when to stop recursing? The way that we can do that here is we can say, well, if there's no more values left in tail, then there's nothing else to do. So we can just return. This will break the recursive loop because we never get to the recursive call site. So now, if we run this, we will see one through 10. We have refactored our for loop into a recursive loop. If you don't understand this, pull this down, play with it, check out my link in the description to my recursion article, get comfortable with this concept, understand how a recursive loop works basically. Now we're going to move on to a bit more of a real quote unquote example of how to create a recursive definition. So we'll write a function called sum and it again is going to accept an array and I guess I'll set it up right now some nums, oops. Oh, 
So we need to understand the parts of a recursive function. We know that we need a base case so that we exit. We know that we need to make a recursive call and we know that we need to do something. So let's start with our base case. This is generally a safe place to start if you're not sure where else to start. And the ways that you can think about a base case is first of all, you can consider when would I know when I need to stop? That's what we did last time. We said there's no more elements in tail, we can just stop. The other way to think about it is how could I handle the simplest or most minimal situation? And so the simplest or most minimal situation here could be something like an empty array, right? So if we had no elements in the array, we could just return zero. If we had two elements in the array and we called them, or one element in the array, we could just return x it, if we called that first value x. So let's go up here and we'll do that, right? X, x's. Or I'll just keep calling this tail. We could then return the first value if we only had one value in the array. And the way that we could check this is to see that there was no values in tail. If we only had two values, we could add those first two values together. Beyond this, we probably want to start recursing. So we've got this initial example where we are in this initial case where we say we know how to handle the zero case where there's no values, the value, the case where there's one value and the case where there's two. If we could wrap all those together, we could have a single base case. Otherwise, we're going to recurse. So we can do that because we know that we're using the plus operator. Zero plus anything equals that thing. So if we have one plus zero, we get back one. So we can say, if we don't have a value for x, let's just call it zero. If we don't have a value for y, let's just call it zero. We've now handled the case where there's an empty array, in which case we'll return zero because zero plus zero is zero. The case where there is one value in the array because that value plus zero is going to be equal uh, that value and two values will just have values for x and y and we'll return those values so now all we need to do is let it know when this base case is appropriate to run and in that case it's going to be when tail dot length equals zero so in other words there's no other values in the array that are concerning us if there are values in the array we need to now do our recursive definition Thinking about a recursive definition of sum, the sum of all of the numbers in an array is the sum of the first two numbers plus the sum of the rest of the array. So we can write that out quite literally as x plus y plus sum of tail. Now if I've done this all correctly, let's prettier this then we should see back 55, which we do. We've written our recursive definition down here. So we're going to take one plus two, that will give us three. Three plus all the numbers of three through 10 is going to be passed in here, which means that we'll add three and four as x plus y, and then we'll recurse of five through 10. We'll add five and six, and then we'll add seven and eight, and then we'll add nine and 10, at which point 9 and 10 will be our base case. So we get back 19. It's going to add 19 to, I guess, 15, because that would be the sum of 7 and 8, which was in the previous iteration. And it's going to unfold all the way back up, adding all those numbers together until we get to 55. So the final value that we would have here is from that first iteration where we had uh, two, 1 and 2. So that would be 1 plus 2 the result of sum tail, so the sum of the rest of the array, we know is 52. This becomes 53, or this becomes three, and then that becomes 55. If that's messing with your head a little bit, I totally get it. This is going to be the most difficult recursion probably ever is for you if you've never seen this before. But this is why I think this is a good place to start because it's a very explicit recursive definition, and we all understand how to sum the values in an array. If we wanted to do this by hand, we would say, what's one plus two? It's three. 
and then three plus three is six, and we're doing the same thing here. We're saying add two values together and then add them to the rest of the array. Now for a number of reasons, we would actually prefer not to write our recursive call like this. Unfortunately, tail call recursion was removed from, or tail call optimization, uh, is not included in pretty much any JavaScript engine that exists right now at the time of recording this, even though it's in the JavaScript spec. But because it's in the spec, I would recommend rewriting this in a different way. If you haven't heard of tail call recursion, there's a full explanation in the article link below. Otherwise, uh, I'll have to cover it in a future video, and I believe I've covered it before on this channel, so you can probably see an example there. Uh, but what it basically means is we want to pass all of the arguments into our recursive call. So we don't want to be doing something like x plus y and then calling sum. We want to have all of that be inside of one recursive call. So let's rewrite this as the sum of an array is going to be the first two values added together with the rest of the array. So we have the sum of the array is the sum of the first two values plus the sum of the rest of the array. It's a bit, this rec the recursive definition is a bit less obvious when written this way, but it does something very similar. We're now saying one plus two becomes three. So now the value that's passed into our recursive call is three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. On the next iteration, it'll be six because it's three plus three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then 10, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, yes, all the way up until the point where we have 45, which is going to be all of the values up to that point added together plus tail, which would just be 10. Uh, actually, we would have a recursive call. We would hit our base case when there's only two values left. So that would be up here. So we have 45 plus 10, which would give us back 55. So if I run this, we get 55. Now, if we wanted to get very, very meta here, we could do something like sum of these two values. You would not write this like this, but uh, if you wanted to see just how recursive we could get, you could do something like this, right? So now we quite literally have the sum of the array is the sum of the first two values plus the sum of the rest of the array. Oh, unless you do it wrong. What have I got wrong here? Sum, sum. Hmm. Not quite sure what I have. Oh, you have to invoke some. You can't just, this is the funny thing. JavaScript's a bit too flexible sometimes. Just let me do that. Now we get 55. So if you missed that while I was trying to fix it, I forgot to invoke some. I used square brackets there uh, instead of parentheses and then passing it inside as an argument. So there we have our definition. Sum, the sum of the array is the sum of the first two values and the sum of the rest of the values all summed together to get the sum of all the values. Sum, 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 sum. Very recursive, much wow. We get 55. And because of the way that we wrote our base case, we can pass in an empty array and we get zero. We can pass in a single element and we get back. We can pass in two elements and we get it back. And as we can see, we pass in a number of arguments and we get the sum. That's the basics of recursion. Hopefully this pointed you in the right direction if you haven't seen recursion before. Again, you might not be sold on the benefits quite yet, but if you understand, or better yet, if you don't understand this video, then you're going to struggle to understand the benefits of it in the appropriate recursive examples. So I'd say get comfortable with these concepts, play around with the code, understand what's going on, and then at that point, you can move on to understanding things like navigating a binary tree, 
figuring out a Fibonacci sequencing, optimizing it, dynamic programming, these sorts of things. But that's that for this video. If you make it to the end, thanks for watching. Appreciate all of you, and I'll see you in the next video.